superstar. He is an absolute superstar, Tom Mitchell. Pips at the back. Pips is too good. Neil, 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 yes! Oh, how good was that? Ball Magnets team, it's time for another diary entry. We've done a couple of these, so why not do one more? Because we do have a few updates for you guys. We want to keep you in the loop with what's happening within the Ball Magnets community, what's happening with the Ball Magnets players, and what's uh, to come in the short term, medium term, and long term. So for all the Ball Magnets fans out there, uh, what do you want to start with? Well, I've actually just got some pretty unfortunate news, so I might fill you in on that. I'm going to require surgery on my foot. So I've had a plantar fascia issue, which is the fascia on the bottom of your foot for pretty much the whole season. I've been carrying it since the start of the year and I managed to play the first seven. Uh, I might have missed one in there, but since then I've just been pretty sore, uh, unable to really get out of first and second gear to sprint and do football drills. So I uh, had a little episode of training the other day and that's gonna require surgery. So gonna be out for a little period of time. I'm hoping that I'm still gonna get back. I'm very confident I'm gonna get back to play some footy this year and yeah, hope the boys can keep winning so that we can uh, enter a finals campaign and hopefully can be a part of that. So I'm expecting, you know, it's hard to put a number on a rehab time frame, but, you know, it could be eight weeks. Uh, it could be slightly shorter. It could be slightly longer. It's a bit of wait and see. So I've got surgery tomorrow. Uh, small procedure only goes for about half an hour. Uh, they actually will slice the plantar fascia, so they cut it in half and then, yeah, that'll be gone. Uh, for Yeah, I won't have one anymore. So um, that's what's going to happen. And, yeah, I'll get to work, put the rehab in, do the work, and I'll be ready for later in the year. So just hoping that the boys can get going. Uh, Paddy Cripps, let's talk about Cripper for a second because I think he's a genuine chance for a second Brownlow. He could join Lockie. He's absolutely flying. Whoever saw his game against both the Gold Coast at Eddie had, that was one of his most – sorry, not Eddie had, Marble, I should say. Uh, apologies to Marble. They'd probably pay a lot for their sponsorship. Uh, if anyone saw that game, Cripper was at his best. His clearance game, he's hitting the scoreboard and then, you know, going uh, over to Adelaide and – and playing against Port and, you know, carrying the team in the last quarter, putting him on his shoulders, really. He's going to poll in so many games. I can really see Cripper doing really well. Clearly, I'd love to see Nick Dacos, a teammate of mine, win it. Uh, Isaac Heaney's a contender. He's also a friend who I played with up at the Swans. We played in a losing grand final together in 2016. So, you know, I know a few guys who are going to be in the running for it. I'll be happy for whoever does get it. We're at the halfway point. So it's going to be very interesting to see who's uh, leading the Chaz count. But, you know, Cripper... You know, he's, he's going to be up there. He's a vote getter. Uh, another vote getter is our other fellow ball magnet, Lockie Neal, who we've done a podcast with. And that was honestly one of my favorite podcasts. I think having Pendles the week before into Lockie Neal in this sort of environment where you've got a relationship with a fellow athlete and, you know, a relationship beyond the football field, I think it's a great environment to get players and athletes to really open up. And I think we've been very fortunate on the ball magnets pod to have that with Pendles and Lockie. And, Pendles with his experience, you know, he doesn't give out pods for free. So I'm just so grateful for him to sharing all the knowledge and everything he did. And he's a, not only a great teammate, but a great mate. And as is Lockie, you know, we've uh, come through our footy journeys together. We were drafted at the same time. Uh, we had some trips over to America together. We both love our basketball. We've both been fortunate enough to meet Steph Curry, do some really cool things. Um, yeah, we discussed some pretty deep things on the pod. Lockie, for a really casual guy, he's a really deep thinker. He's one of the smartest footballers you'll ever come across. Um, yeah, like I said, very casual, but the way he prepares and the way he thinks, he's a step ahead and it's no reason why. He's one of the greats of this generation. I think he's honestly right at the top of the tree. Two-time Brownlow medalist, all Australians, best and fairest. I'm hoping he does get a premiership because he deserves one, as does Cripper. But we do go into detail about talking about the 2023 grand final. Lockie and I obviously went head to head. That was a pretty brutal day. I've touched on it on the Ball Magnets pod before. It's always tough when you're going up against a mate, let alone it being on grand final day. So, you know, I had to really go out of my way to get under Lockie's skin, which was uncomfortable as a mate because, you know, you want to see him do well, but also it's a grand final. Everything's on the line. You know, you've worked your whole football career to get to that point. So me and Lockie really got after the game and each other that day and, um, yeah, I wouldn't say it was frosty. Like post post game, it was, you know, we were obviously it was still a bit fiery just because that's what happens in a grand final. But we're obviously great mates. We've we've had multiple catch ups since we, we got lunch again today. We've gone out for drinks and beers and it's friends as usual. So it's great to know that, you know, in a combative, competitive sport, you can compete and still have your great mates on the outside. So 
Um, that's one thing that means a lot to me is our, our, our friendship. So it was great to have a chat with Lockie. We've also had so many other good podcast guests, which I can't wait for you guys to hear the episodes. Uh, one of the usual staples, Tommy Phillips. He's always got some great comedy and some great insights. Jack Ginevan, we talk with Guinea. I think that's going to be a great episode because you guys are going to get to really know Guinea the person. I feel like everyone has a picture in their head of what Guinea is like, but I think you may get the wrong idea in some parts. He's, he's got some quirky personality traits and I know everyone's fascinated by him. So that's one pod to look out for. Guinea and I are actually thinking about starting our own podcast together. So that's uh, a watch this space. I'm sure Guinea lovers out there, both Collingwood, Hawthorne and AFL supporters, that'll be one to look out for because he's uh, very entertaining and just a, a great person to chat footy with, with his IQ, but he's also you know, very entertaining and people gravitate towards him. Later this year, we have the Boomers going to the Olympics. How good is that going to be? Playing against Team USA, a stacked team, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. I don't know who you leave the ball with for the final shot if it does come down to that. I don't think they'll have any issues with deciding a game-winning shot because they're going to be that far ahead of everyone. But um, the people that would know best about that would be our Boomers players. So how lucky we've been to have Jock Landau in the studio. That episode will be released prior to the Olympics. Our man from Ball Magnets, Josh Giddy, has been with us since day one uh, of the Ball Magnets um, community. Uh, Gids has been back in Melbourne, caught up with him over the weekend. He's great. He's going to be running the Boomers team by the sounds of it. So uh, the ball's going to be in his hands a lot. I'm pumped to see what he can do running the Australian Boomers offense. Caught up with Dyson Daniels as well. Clearly another uh, bo uh, boy from Melbourne, a uh, Bendigo guy. Um, yeah, we obviously shot a documentary and where Dyson was just so accommodating. One of the great guys in sports, especially for his age, so mature, just such a legend. We were in New Orleans, you know, he took us through his house. We, we jumped in his cars, he showed us his shoe collection. And you can watch all this behind the scenes things, the Pelicans facility on KO. So there's a documentary, the Ball Magnets documentary of the off season, where you can go and get an insight into Dyson's life. But it's not only Dyson we go behind the scenes with, it's Josh Gideon OKC, it's uh, Lou Headley in the NFL, uh, punter for the New Orleans Saints. It's Josh Green and Dante Exum who are playing the NBA Finals. How cool is that? Imagine two Aussies winning a chip together. That's insane. So we had the full tour of the Dallas Mavericks facility. You'll see us putting up shots, having deep chats with them about sports, about life. And yeah, we actually got a picture opportunity with Kyrie Irving while we are in the Dallas facility, had a chat with him. That wasn't actually recorded. Uh, we felt a bit uncomfortable putting a camera in his face. So. We saw, tried to put ourselves in his shoes and yeah, not get in his way too much. But he was a super friendly guy, super friendly guy. And as were all the NBA stars we met over there, you know, I'm a huge NBA fan and lover, obviously. Damian Lillard and Shay Gilgis Alexander, Giddy's teammate. Uh, we met those guys as well. We were on court for warm ups of most games we went to. And yeah, they were both friendly, both very chatty, interested in what we do with AFL and our sport. So some really cool things happening with Ball Magnets. The documentary, um, yeah, that's on KO. Go check that out, Ball Magnets documentary. The one thing I haven't touched on yet is this, and that's our merch, which if you follow Ball Magnets on socials, you'll see it everywhere. Uh, everyone's getting their hands on it at the moment. So yeah, that's selling quick, and we appreciate the support from you guys. We love that you love what we're creating, both with uh, the logo, but the Ball Magnets merch community. So yeah, if you can get your hands on some, they're selling like hotcakes, uh, like I keep saying. So we want to keep creating more and more uh, merchandise, but we also want to make it unique and special so that, you know, um, people do feel special when they do get their hands on an item because there's obviously not a lot of Ball Magnets merch out there. Uh, a few NBA predictions. Uh, this is purely just for my own self-enjoyment. I'd love to see Dallas win the championship. I'd love to see Kyrie Irving win a championship with Luca. I think it adds an element to his career, being able to win a championship without LeBron James. I just don't see him getting it done against the Celtics. I think the Celtics have five genuine good players who could win you a game. You see Kristaps Porzingis win a game for them today off the bench. And then you've got Drew Holiday, Derek White, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, you know, and you add Porzingis, that's five stars. And I think in a final series, the stars rise to the top and they get it done. So I think Luca and Kyrie are gonna put up a good fight, but I'm saying, uh, Celtics in six. I normally put all my bets through Buddy Bet. It's a it's an app uh, which I encourage all you guys to give a go. It's a, actually a really fun app. It's it's not so much about you know the sports betting element. It's also about social betting. And there's some really funny things you can do. And um, you know you can you can almost bet on anything. You can bet on 
you know, a table tennis tournament you have with your housemate at home and you can put that on your buddy bet. And if you've got a community of friends, you can get people to jump on the bet and get involved socially. So it's a, it's a really fun way to, um, yeah, create some new creative ideas with your friends. And the best part about it as well, you don't actually have to bet money. You can do handshake bets and handshake agreements. So, um, yeah, they're going to start supporting us and we really appreciate buddy bet for helping us keeping to build our ball magnets community and podcast, because we know you guys love it. The listens are through the roof, YouTube, Spotify, wherever you like to listen to the podcast. We appreciate the love. I think that's everything uh, from us at the moment. Obviously, I'm going to be injured out of action for a while, so hopefully that means more ball magnets content. But in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, how can the pies, and I hope the boys can just keep getting wins, and hopefully I can put in a good rehab and be a part of a potential finals campaign. That's where my uh mine sits at the moment that's what's in the back of my mind I, I would love to be a part of a finals campaign having experienced last year there's nothing better so i'll be doing everything in my power to get back and i'm hoping that the boys you know we're a bit um short on numbers at the moment we've got a huge injury list and we've got a lot of young guys stepping up doing great jobs getting great results for us as a team and as a squad so uh, for the pies fans out there let's just hope we can um, keep that rolling on and yeah some huge games at the back end of the season i think we play maybe eight games at the MCG, maybe one at the SCG. So we're going to have a, a good run of games at home and I can't wait to be in the stands watching for some of them and then I'll be back for some of them as well, which I can guarantee. So uh, thanks again for listening. I hope you enjoyed this time's diary entry and until next time, chat to you soon. Have you got a mate who's always bragging about their latest NBA same game multi wins but never seem to have the good mail for yourself? Well, get them to jump on BuddyBet where the spoils can be shared. BuddyBet is your one-stop shop for social betting and it has unique products like peer-to-peer, jackpot and buddy bet golf that you won't find anywhere else. What are you really gambling with? For free and confidential support, call 1800 858 858 or visit gamblinghelponline.org.au. But building that niche piece, yeah. podcast piece, well, it's good is, to have isn't the, it? It's good to have the podcast piece back. We're back again. Yeah. Episode two. Yeah. Do you remember, did you used to watch the Hamish and Andy show much? I've no, been listening sort of... to their podcast recently, pretty yeah. late to the party. Yeah. Uh, listening to how they get like special talents and things on, on yeah. air, which is pretty funny. Well, lucky you can be early to the party on this podcast for yeah. all the, all the, uh, the fans. Correct, uh, correct. And, and members of the, of the institution. Yes. Yeah. Well, where do you want to start with this? Because this could go anywhere. It, Why don't we start with what you're wearing? <laughs> what, what are you wearing? Well, I've got, I'm, um, I'm all merged up today. You're merged I've got up the, hard. Uh, I've yeah. got the ball mags. Is, that, is it a plug piece? Yeah, I've got the ball mags hoodie. Is this a new release? So that's a brand new hoodie. That's yeah. uh, limited stock coming out next couple of weeks. Colour plain. Colour plain, yep. yep. Uh, Jesse and the lads. Yeah. They will. And Which Super Bruce hat as well. Yeah, Super That's, that's hat. been around the globe, that hat. It has. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it, not about three laps of the, <laughs> of the world. <laughs> it's, it's seen a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, need a, we need to mass produce them a little bit more. Yeah. Like these these ball mags hoodies but yeah no it's warm it's good yeah. it looks good on you well what you had to give up to wear that was your longhorns hoodie which that was pretty hard getting that off you just then it was to throw that hoodie on i mean we've we've been to longhorns a few times haven't we how good is longhorns we've still i've still got footage there we haven't college haven't, football haven't released yet you can't really it's, have a better day the tailgate piece into yeah. watching the game into what did you say before like at the longhorns obviously is that how they do the song oh yeah yeah the um yeah the horns the, the hook, hook em. yeah hook yeah, em. yeah you do a little um Punk rock and remember when we weren't yeah. actually even watching the game, we were just sort of taking the crowd because there's a hundred thousand there at a college game, yeah. and you just see random patches throughout the game, like people just go, "Mate, I'm like, was this? Am I watching another um, <laughs> movie of the Hunger Games? Yeah, that's like what when, it's like when there's a sacrifice. When there's well, a that's death. When, yeah. when that, that player got injured as well, and you just see the whole crowd just go, yeah, yeah, it's very Hunger Games esque, <laughs> yeah." <laughs> like that oh god speaking of um isaac pearson he's going well there's a huge conduit of um australian rules yeah players going over there ben griffiths or, remember yeah. we spent a day with benny griffiths from uh had a career at the tigers how's this there's a punter at lsu you would you consider punting yeah i know I'd it's in the back of your mind i'd consider i'd consider it for sure yeah. yeah but i mean just on benny griffiths for for a second yeah. i chatted to isaac about ben because yeah. he just recently got signed back up NFL the, or college? On, no, no, NFL on the charges list. No way. On their practice list. I said, I said to Isaac, how much how much has Ben earning, you know, to be on the practice list? So he's not even on the, the, the main list. list. Yeah. He's just like so a he's like a VFL kind of, I don't know. Well, he it's like a rookie, but it's not even he doesn't even get to play. He's mm. just a practice guy. Apparently he gets four hundred and thirty US 
um, dollars, thousand, four hundred thirty thousand. No way USD. to be on a practice list. To be on a practice. You're yeah. kidding me. Four hundred thirty k US dollars, and you to don't be even, a practice you don't even play. list punter. Oh he doesn't my. even play. That could be 130 you. Grand. That could be you. That's amazing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. I said to Isaac, mate. What piece is that? I don't even know what piece that is. That's that. Oh, yeah. That's that clipping the ticket piece, yeah. actually. We know <laughs> a few that are very good at that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> clipping the I, ticket piece. I, yeah, there's a big list of those ticket clippers. Yeah, there is. What about um, on the piece? We've dropped probably, what, 20 pieces already so far. Uh, for those that don't know, we'll have to probably bring up our previous episode where we touched on this. Yeah, but we have talked about it. We've we've gone into depth about this before, but I'm seeing more and more people being aware of the piece, especially you know other teams. I've seen the Swans boys, Melbourne mm. Demons boys, mm. probably in the last 12 months, click onto the piece and the pandemic that's hit the I, AFL. I but we were we were yeah. onto this in 2017, and it's that copyright piece for me. Like I, yeah, I, well, I want I want yeah. recognition for it. <laughs> Because we discovered this <laughs> in our leading team sessions at Hawthorne, probably what twenty nineteen. Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah, yeah we were onto yeah. this early, and we've got clips yeah. to back that up. Well, definitely, definitely. When I was there in the start of end of twenty twenty, like <laughs> late sort of preseason, early twenty twenty one, this stuff was starting to happen, and yeah. I don't reckon it was like <laughs> circulating or like evident in the AFL or any. I think we had the IP really. I the mean, IP it, pace. Yeah, the, can I, you, the can IP you piece your... is where there's probably been a breakdown <laughs> of that ownership piece. Yeah. You know, because <laughs> now everyone thinks like it's – now everyone's just using it in Everyone thinks it's theirs right? or they've picked up on it. Yeah. They're three years, late, three years too late for mine. Yeah. It's that delayed piece. How do we go about that? Well, like well, externally. One do we way do a we little, go about maybe it. Maybe we do a, like a, a vote. Well, we've got a, a group called Troy Make Peace. Yeah, we do. A text actually. group. And that, that <laughs> stems back to three or four years ago. <laughs> And we've got clips of every press oh conference of every coach, every player dropping pieces and just how, how much of a filler word it is and how much it's a word that people just use to try and sound really smart. Yeah. So I don't know where you want to take this, but it's got to a point now where we probably deserve that, recogni that recognition. I think we need, yeah, <laughs> I think there needs to be some sort of um, formalisation of it almost. I think we need almost, I, I, I'm putting it out there, I think we do a survey on, do we, is that the next hoodie? Could be the piece. Could be that piece, yeah. Um, and it's got, you know, it has to have some sort of a intellectual property component <laughs> behind it. I think we need to sort of like bring it to the the forefront. I think so. As, What's as been your your favourite piece over these? Because there's been a number of different ones dropped. Probably, I would say the most common piece dropped is the connection piece. I think every yeah. single footy team would use the word connection piece in most meetings. Mm. Um, I, can, I know at Collingwood at the moment, awareness piece is used quite a bit in yeah. opposition analysis. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, Education just an, just an awareness, Just an awareness piece around this play when they run this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Education piece is a big one. Yeah, um, that's quite a there prominent, were, there prominent were piece. Some out, yeah, there were some outrageous ones back in the day. I remember um, one of our favourite <laughs> um, welfare managers at, at Hawthorne, you know, he really amplified it and got it to a level um, where we really – yeah, took it and ran with it, you know, like, but he, he didn't know, you know, he had, we, we really, I think, um, commercialized it, you know, yeah. and, and to what it is today. But, um, you know, the, the piece around the borders during COVID time was, was a massive one, um, that because no one could travel <laughs> and we had to, a few Irish blokes and, um, uh, our, our welfare manager, you know, used to go out, get out the front and, and talk about how, you know, there's a piece around the borders, you know, and there's, um, you know, a piece around, you know, Nashi and a piece around Fionn. And, there was and also when the parents came in for the first time at the club, there was an, it wasn't an upstairs piece. induction, there was an upstairs induction piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There was, uh, uh, but is that, is that strain culture, I reckon, what? a little bit? Like, just like, you know, inserting words where there's just yeah like fillers to, yeah just filler stuff like we do a bit of it well, you know, to well be fair, but so you touched on hamish and andy before mm. have you seen some of their segments they do around power moves no anyway no, they I do this segment uh, this is from their early episodes i'm not sure if they still do it but they talk about power moves and how you can you know have the upper hand whether it be in a conversation yeah and things and i wonder if using the word pace is a sort of power move just a sort of you know it's a word that's uh, it's a, yeah. it makes you sound pretty yeah, intelligent. Like you know a bit more You've than got what it, you yeah. do, probably. That yeah. intellect piece. Authority piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Anyway, um, well, let, it, let's leave it at, leave it at that for a bit. It's just plenty, about, to, plenty to think about. What about your hat? You're wearing yeah. the Kerry Grammar hat. Tell what are your us thoughts? about that. You're you're turning coach. Everyone's turning into a bit of a coach. Yeah. Actually, I'm turning a bit of a coach. I think like you know, most people when they finish school they go to their career. Whereas, I guess our career straight out of school was pretty much been footy. So all you pretty much know, therefore, or what what you know most about is footy. So that's why a lot of players go into coaching and then potentially media because you've probably got the expertise to give a good opinion as well. Yeah. Good opinion piece. So um, yeah, I'm I'm yeah debuting in the coaching realm this year at Kerry. Um, so I'll be going to training after this. We might be playing Caulfield. Your old man's a coach there, actually. Yeah, yeah, you will be. Yeah. Um, one of our other mates, uh, Ollie Henrahan, who was a Hawthorne great. Yeah. Uh, is, is also coaching at Wesley with uh, another Hawthorne great, uh, Dave Mirror. As yes, well. yes, Miz. Coaching, Strong sto- uh, coaching staff out there. Yeah, yeah. So there's, I mean, there's a lot of Matt, Matthew Lloyd at yep. Hallibury. Uh, Pendle's um, assistant coach. Yeah, so there's a well, few. I think Brighton is the team to beat from what I'm hearing this year. I think they've got, out of the 40 in the Vic Metro squad, I think they've got eight. Yeah. That's a stacked team. Yeah, okay. Yeah. That's, pretty, yeah. that's pretty big. Yeah. There's a lot of, continues to be a lot of, commentary and, and conversation around the, the APS and the, the APS footy school pace. system. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. baseline footy, that page has sort of taken off. Yeah, and, yeah. They're doing well. Absolutely. We might actually be have a few collaboration pieces with them as well coming I, up. I think so. Some I think school holiday it. program pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think there's some good pieces in that. Yeah. Um, the boys down there, they yeah. do a great, do a yeah. great job with some the good baseline footage. lads. You can see, like, it's one thing I've noticed coaching APS footy, like, not saying the carry guys are like this, but they're definitely aware. Players, I reckon, are aware of where the cameras are, and it might be that time to throw a bit of extra candy. And I've just noticed that, you know, because they record everything. Yeah, yeah. You know, guys really try and show show what they've got because they yeah. know they can get on baseline. Yeah, it's like um actually, you know what? That reminds me of um even the like the US recruiting of mm. like in the college system and stuff to get high school kids recruited into um. You know those type of systems. It's you know getting getting yourself on tape. True. You know, like all that sort of stuff. So that self it's interesting. Self pump up pace almost. Like yeah. you're almost got to create a tape to send to college teams. That's what everyone does in the states. Yeah. Whereas here it's sort of frowned upon to to do that. You, you know, change you don't want a narrative. Yeah, really. it's different. Different culture. Yeah. 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 You're crucified here if you do it. Yeah. Yeah. I I agree. It's, well, Mason uh, Cox might be a good one to ask about that. The Coxman piece. What about the Coxman on the weekend? Yeah. He's in the one he injury. Okay? In the one hit, listen to this. Fractured cheekbone. Mm. He's getting surgery. Mm. Broken rib and MCL all in the one hit. He was walking like, we are laughing at the club the other day. He was walking like, uh, you know those things you see at like car sale shops? Like the oh, big, yeah. Yeah. The the big th- things. Like the, that's just how the he big was tubes. walking. Yeah, the big, the big tubes. tubes. Yeah. yeah. He, that yeah. was him. Man. He's he's done so well with different injuries he's got. Yeah, like it'd be tough carrying that height and weight. I reckon. Yeah, 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 yeah. What about the um, Tottenham Hotspurs coming in just for like a what about hot that? lap? Basically, that was they just did a chat lap and then flew back to England. <laughs> it was an in and out piece, wasn't it? Yeah. So they flew in on what day was it? We were uh, went to the game on the Wednesday, so I reckon they flew in Monday. They had a day to get right. Then we we met them on Wednesday. We met all the players and Sunny. Sonny was great. Right. Sonny Fedora. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How do you pronounce his name? Hyung Min Sun. Yeah, Hyun Min yeah. Sun, yeah. He's a star. Yeah. But how nice was he as well? Amazing. Yeah. yeah. We yeah, had a good I mean, couple of minutes, sat and chat with him. A few, Bit few of a language good, barrier, but he was great. Yeah, a few good photos with all the players. They'll that surface good. soon. Yeah. We um we went around getting signatures yeah. from all the guys and um uh there was a Pedro who was one of the um That's right. the players as yeah, well. Yeah, and uh, uh Emerson Royal. Yeah. You got to pick with Emerson. Yeah, yeah. Well, I felt kind of sorry for them because, you know, when we do the signing sessions at footy and they can take hours and mm. you sort of know what it's like in their position, they'd come off the plane so jet lagged and I guess it was that VIP pay, so there was only about 20 of us to sign, but you could tell they just didn't want to be there yeah. to an extent, which is fair enough. Sort of, yeah, they were, they were ready to, they were ready ready to sort of go, weren't they? Yeah. yeah. Well, they come in, they played a game. Like the game itself was pretty good. I, first half in particular was one all. Yeah. And both squads, Newcastle and Tottenham, bought decent teams out, which was cool. But then it's off-season mode for them, so they'll probably be yeah, planning their trips to Ibiza or wherever yeah, they go. Yeah, well, yeah. You might see Pedro in yeah. uh, Ibiza. <laughs> you saw him last time. Um, <laughs> but I'll tell you what, that two years ago when we were there, it's um, the Hotspurs' new stadium at that stage, I yep. believe. Oh, how good was that? 
That was, was a service cool there from the uh, the Mew Man that te- teed that up for us. Yeah, yeah, that was great. Yeah, a box of the Tottenham game and could be a uh, potential off season trip for us this year, doing some stuff with Tottenham Hotspur, yeah. which could be exciting. That could be um, that could be documentary number two. There's there's one that's about to come out. Um, yes, Ball Man is on KO, which is which yeah. Is cool. So that'll be. Just trying to think. By the time this pod's released, it'll probably be live on KO. So we've yeah. got a documentary that me and you filmed going around the states. Dallas Mavericks, OKC Thunder, New Orleans Pelicans, behind the scenes. I'm forgetting a few other teams. New Orleans Saints in the NFL. Uh, Nashville for 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Nashville for some downtime. Yeah. It wasn't so much downtime. Um, yeah, so that doco is going to be epic. It'll give people a, a real insight into life behind the scenes in professional American sports because we connect with obviously the athletes we yeah. did. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. So that'll be on KO. June 7, I think, is the drop date. Yeah, June seven. So it's amazing ready for the that. scale, the scale of the scale of things. I know we've talked about it before, but like world sport and um, even like as important as AFL is, mm. you know, in its home environment, the scale of just the the reachability and the people that watch it. Like at an actual physical game, mm. like AFL is probably one of the most watched. If you look at like just stadium sizes, yeah, people that turn up, yeah, like attendances, there's, there's yeah. a massive like in-person um engagement there but then yeah. like on a world standard it's just like outside of melbourne adelaide perth there's not a lot of oh and now sydney you know yeah. they're on top of the ladder and probably flying a bit of a flag but like it's amazing like then seeing these other sports that mm. um adjust you know on their on their own level too you know yeah but like if if more people had access mm. to afl um you know i think it's one of the best games if not the the best in the world that like incorporates yeah. so many different things yeah Fitness, it'd be one of the hardest skill, sports for sure you know yeah so like but it must be hard to actually build up as an athlete to actually get to the point where you can play high level you know afl type you know sp- sport like you think about it, like basketball is quite easy to pick up for a lot of people like yeah millions of people could probably play shoot a ball it's round you can bounce it like afl oh. it's pretty complex right yeah, so it's like a bit going it, it, on there's probably that's probably a bit of a barrier to entry in a lot of ways for people to actually get good at but at the same time it is only sort of born in australia yeah. and like we are sort of separated a little bit from other parts of the world yeah. so it's it'd be interesting to see how we actually how the afl actually evolves i don't know how whether it can evolves. get to a biggest i don't know if it will a bigger scale um yeah, the com- complex is the right word to put right word to describe it because you always speak to these international athletes that we've been able to connect with. They've got so many questions around rules and mm. how does this work? And mm. unless you've grown up with a game, it's almost like impossible to explain to the point where we were just chatting before around how difficult the game must be to umpire in the AFL to the point where I just feel sorry for the umpires. Like it must be that tough. Yeah. Like you've got. I guess the AFL telling you this is how we want you to adjudicate and then you're getting, you know, um, Clubs. copy it from the media for why you make this decision when this is what they're told to do. Mm. Like how do you win? You've got two fan bases on either side of the stadium. You're never going to have – every decision you make, there's going to be one that feels like they're hard done by. Like I don't know, as an umpire, yeah. your well-being must be, you know, it would be how really much they tough. Invest in, it'd be really yeah, tough. How much the AFL invests in – in umpiring it must be a fair bit um but like i guess it's interesting like a lot of people would complain about the Mm. state of um umpiring but like it's probably you look at the flow and effects and the dominoes like why why would you probably not well invested and like it's not like people don't want to actually like put their time and energy towards like learning the game to umpire it. Yeah, why would you want to like do it if you're just going to cop it? Effects. If you're just yeah. going to cop it at, yeah. at all the time for people. So how do we expect the game to be umpired better? But also I think that language around, oh, how bad was the umpiring today is infectious because obviously being at Kerry and doing some junior footy coaching, it's so interesting to always see post game, you, you, you know, you chat to parents and people watching games, not in the APS, but also go watch junior footy games and friends playing local leagues as well. And such a common throwaway line that everyone always feels they're hard done by. It's like, oh, how bad were the umpires today? Yeah. It feels like everyone, you know, every game you go to, there's always someone that feels like they're hard done by. And that anger is taken out towards someone who's trying to do 
the best job in a really complex game. It's almost like you're looking, people look for an out or an excuse always. Yeah. And I, I, you know, sometimes I get it wrong, but I think who said this recently? Players are making way more mistakes on the field than the umpires, I think. Yeah, errors probably. and skill errors and yeah. yeah oh yeah way more yeah way more do you um do you ever think about it from a lens that you're actually like you know when you say something happened on the field and you're not directly involved in that bit of play you're almost umpiring it from wherever you are like do you and do you think blokes people are out there sometimes in their head a little making bit going, decisions as yeah, to what they would call yeah they're like oh in the back you know yeah, like, yeah oh, a little bit oh what was that you yeah know, a little like, bit there's a lot of – as a player, do you think – like I think like probably when you're playing your best games, you're not thinking about any of nah. that. But then sometimes if you're, if you're distracted or you're not like – Yeah. You're almost seeing things from afar a bit more yeah. naturally and you go, yeah. oh, shit, it should have been in the back or – Yeah. You know, no, so. I think you're spot on. When you're, when you're in that zone of playing and you're not thinking about anything, anything and you almost get to the end of the game and you think – what just happened the last two hours? You know, have you had those games where you're just like, you're almost in a trance and that's yeah. when you play your best footy. Yeah. And I think when you are getting caught up in the external there, probably your, your, your games where you're not as focused. Um, and the quicker you can, I guess, reset out of those modes when you lose your focus back to mm. performance mode, they're probably your traits of some of the best players. They're able to move on pretty quick yeah. and not let it affect them. Yeah. 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 I'll tell you what, there's some, um, it's great to see uh, Lockie Sullivan playing. So good footy how good at the moment, hey. Good story. Oakley Chargers boy. Yeah. Um, premiership and now he's now he's coming at real late. Getting picked as a twenty six year old. Like just hanging in there is pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Played at St. Kevin's old boys, I think, with the Moose. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, then the he Moosey. was VFL yeah. Williamstown. Uh Doggies VFL. Yeah. 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 That journey pace. Yeah. 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 I love a journey. Yeah. Take this journey. Yeah, you've been on a journey. I'm still on a journey. <laughs> Where's the journey taking you Mid-season next? Mid-season drafts on Wednesday. Yeah? Do you reckon I slip something under the table? And I think just, so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Get a spot. Yeah. yeah. If not, go I NFL punting. That could be your calling. Yeah. What's your yeah. left foot barrels like? Yeah. Um, it's all right. I think I, I'm, I'm, I'd be more of a rollout player to start, I reckon. Yeah. yeah. yeah rollout, drop punts. The Lou Headley Yeah, Lou Headley piece. Yeah. Swing across, get some leverage. Yeah. Um, and they don't see that coming, the Americans. No, they're, and it's, they're so robotic in the yeah, way that it's growing their mechanics now. are. That whole thing sort of growing. I yeah. think like it's it's only coming on to be adopted now, even at an NFL um, level. I mean, look, when most people think about punters, they go, "Well, oh, it's the Sav Rockers. It's these guys that mm. can kick massive, like have massive legs." Which is, you know, there's there's definitely advantage in that. Um, but now there's different types and ways to actually. Mm be able to kick and get height and length, but then also positionally where you're, mm. where you're kicking it. Um, Is it too risky? I assume it probably would be, but imagine someone in the NFL who could kick both feet equal. Because like most players, like Lou obviously always rolls to his right foot. Imagine like you fake right, you go left and do something completely different and that's an advantage that a team might not have ever seen before. Yeah, that's Because we got guys in our league in the AFL who can, like Josh Dacos, for example, kicks both feet pretty much the exact same. Which is pretty crazy. Yeah, it's a yeah. They're rare type of players. Yeah, but like, imagine if someone did it in, in the NFL. Like, that's a big payday, surely. I think I think it would. I think it would be. Yeah. But every te- every team, it's interesting when they re- would rec- recruit you, and you know, you've talked to some of the guys over there as well. Like, it's some of the time, it's you're molding into their sort of system a little bit. Or mm-hmm. they'll go true. after a specific punter. That's like, true. We want someone that can actually roll out because it'll suit our offense better. Or yeah. we just want. Um, someone that can kick spirals yeah. because we want to, you know, we want to give time to um, the defensive and you know, like there's a lot to learn. There's a lot of yeah, shit to learn, true. right? But, yeah, um, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. How's how's your how are you going? How's your body? How's things? Yeah, it's been general, a frustrating right? year from an individual point of view. Obviously, got a foot issue at the moment. Plantar fasciitis. Have you had that? I haven't. Yeah, no. don't get it. It's not no. good. Bottom of your foot. I'm sort of the. The fascia on the bottom of your foot so it's effectively like a heel injury but it's just like a knife getting stabbed into your, the bottom of your foot every step you take is it from too much is it overuse is it like a potentially it's sort of hard to pinpoint one thing yeah. <clears throat> like what are we working with at the moment like there's a lot of stuff i'm doing with 
I actually went to this biomechanics lab during the week, which was really cool. I put it on my TikTok, actually. I've been pu- pumping out a few TikToks lately. Yeah. Um, and we put these sensors in my feet and you run and do all these running tests and then you get all these charts and pressure points of your feet and it shows whereabouts you're putting the pressure, how you can create an orthotic to avoid or that or, you know, manoeuvre things in different ways to therefore reduce your pain to therefore be able yeah. to run fast and return to training. So something I'd never done before, but it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. How's your rigor mortis? Sports science piece. Yeah. Sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's that gradual get better piece. But yeah. we got a few injuries at the moment, the pies, but um Yeah. Boys are still going well. Yeah, geez. So, I might rock up to training tomorrow. Hey, Wednesday did you say Wednesday's yeah. the uh, the mid season drafts? Yeah it is. Yeah. 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 Wednesday's a crazy day for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Just roll in. Yeah. Straight to locker twenty one. Well, yeah, I've been um, I've I've been doing a bit of intermittent fasting just to just to burn a bit of fat and just really? keep, keep you know roaring. Does that know, work? Basically, yeah, I think so. So you fast from when dinner till when? So usually like uh, nine to ten p.m. till the next day at about three thirty to four p.m. So no way. I haven't ate, eaten anything yet um, <laughs> today. I'll have something. In a few hours. Will that be uh, sort of a Doritos and Super Boost combo? Nah. Sort of what we did overseas. Nah, it'll be. A <laughs> <laughs> that was a, that was a two day diet. That one. Yeah. yeah, that was that was cheese supreme Doritos, orange <laughs> juice, and Pepsi. I think. Just get the vitamin and C. Some Super Boost. Yeah. yeah. Um, nah, I'll, I'll have a, I'll have like a protein rich smoothie, maybe a you know banana and maybe some like chicken and rice or something. Have you it's fluctuated like a, in weight? Like, have you got any results or you haven't? uh i haven't well i haven't done a heap of skin folds regularly mm. um but it's just yeah it's just a few things i've been reading up on the whole that whole space mate it's interesting you know nutrition like just well you, nutrition but how to integrate health as well from different areas of the world like mm. obviously we're so used to certain things in our society you know especially in australia like run clubs are growing like it's all of a sudden now we're seeing things with their health, you know, cold plunges, saunas. Yeah. Like, haven't they taken this, off? But this stuff's been, it has been around for a long oh, time. Yeah. So all of a sudden, just because it becomes popular yeah. to enough people, then everyone else decides to do it. Mm-hmm. It's sort of like, it's just how things work, right? Yeah. You don't you don't want to actually back something or support something until it becomes cool and yeah, exactly. enough, enough. Like saunas, for example, have been around, I don't even know how long, but. Yeah, it's ancient, you know. Like, doing saunas like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> I'm just someone that just tries around a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, yeah, like even cry cryotherapy. Yeah. It's know. sort of like what works for you. I think yeah. like, what do you do? What do you do mainly? Well, I, I think know. I just live by the basics. So I'm I'm like if you're sleeping well and you've got like a, a sleep plan or sleep strategy, if you're eating well, eating just clean by the basics, you know, you, everyone effectively knows what's good and bad. Mm. If you're eating by the basics, if you're exercising regularly, that's good for your mental and physical. Like I think if you get your key pillars right, the extra things with ice baths, cryo, saunas, I reckon they're one to five percenters. But I think if you get the, the the core right, then that's where you should be focusing a lot of your energy. Whereas I think, which a lot of people probably don't. Yeah, do well that, I think though. you know, it, yeah, a, a sauna isn't the answer to fix you know something that might be going wrong with an injury or a, a thing. It might be a one percent thing that gets you. Yeah. to an elevated level but i think you just got to go back to your core things i think people want a magical cure for things sometimes whereas you go back to the key pillars i think if you get them right you're 80 percent there yeah it's yeah. sleep sleep nutrition yeah um for example with my diet i don't know what you do but alcohol all that sort yeah of stuff. exactly i mean like, and you know we've 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 done we, we there's been nights where we've we've had good times and that yeah. sort of stuff but, well, that, not, but we've also done six months things with not having a drink yeah um I haven't had a beer since start of the season, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. It's time and place. I mean, if yeah. it becomes too much of a regular routine thing where like you're just always heading out or always, you know, it's hard mm. to do when you're an elite athlete, right? But for everyone yeah. else, it's- Well, therefore, like, like, I feel like when you're tired thing. as well, that's when you make decisions that are poor around diet. So like yeah. if you've had a night out or if you're sleeping poorly, you crave that instant sugar hit and that's where you might go for like lollies or chocolate mm. or something whereas if you're pretty consistent i feel like you're clear in your decision making and then you can you can say no i don't really need that i can put that off and stay to, stay to the plan yeah 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 i agree yeah um well done mate that's a great yeah. piece there 
Hello, Podca- how are you podcast piece. Well, we've we've pumped out a good half hour. You've got yeah, a right. zoom, you've got a Zoom meeting piece to get to. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Time flies, doesn't it? I was kind of enjoying that last bit. Maybe I can we can get some more of that. I'm so interested in the space around mindset, sort of how each individual, as an athlete or person, what works for them because it's yeah. different for everyone. I think there's a there's a whole customization p- piece. Yeah. <laughs> I well, heard, you know I what? That one. It, it needs to be. There needs to be more effort around that in like team environments. It's easy yeah. to customize yourself when you're in a smaller team, yeah. individual sports. True. How do you do it when you're in a team environment? It's, it's hard, and especially in the AFL where we're probably under resourced in terms of you know the soft cap and things. Whereas overseas in America, effectively each NBA player, like especially the top dogs, they've got their own has team their own stuff. Yeah. yeah, and they exactly. their program with training nutrition, everything is tailored directly to what they need. And I'm not saying we don't do that. Like we do that to an extent where guys are put in, you know, certain buckets of what they need, but it's just hard to, with the resources that, you know, we probably don't have compared to the States to get that to the absolute premium. It's on its way. I think there's shifts, you know, it's going to happen. Like I think naturally a lot of, stuff in this space whether it be sport business um i think there's a lot of innovation and disruption here it's just a lot of the time we're capital poor mm. or we're resource poor time yeah. poor um america there's more fluff and more stuff yeah there is but how about, because, how about because some of the facilities over there unbelievable yeah, like yeah, full yeah. indoor full football field at every pretty much college every big yeah. college we went to and nfl team like it's unbelievable yeah mm. yeah I might get that Longhorns jumper back on. Get it on, yes. Get it on. We've got a few picks of this. Uh, ball magnets merch dropping in the next two weeks. Stay tuned on our socials if you want to get your hands on a teen hoodie because last time they sold out in 10 minutes. That's pretty so cool. Record pace that was. We'll It'd be uh, nice if our um, if if Superboost could sell out in 10 minutes in yeah. Woolworths. <laughs> could be that collaboration that, piece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Great piece, have you, have you Great piece. went to grab one yet or what? What's that? Have you grabbed grab one in Woolies yet? or? No, not Woolies. Yeah, okay. Maybe I'll go to Woolies after this. Yeah. Yeah. Let's both go. Yeah. All right. All Great right. piece, mate. Bookies. <laughs> <laughs>